I'm sure you've heard the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, but I do and I know you do too sometimes, especially if it's an epic or a fantasy book, something that really needs to draw your attention in and want to read it. And let's be honest, someone spent a long time trying to write words into a compelling story, so we should spend some time to make an amazing book cover as well. So today in Kittle, we're going to do just that. We're going to make a fantasy book cover design using colors, font choices, elements, everything you can find in Kittle. Now, if you're new to Kittle, I would love for you to go ahead and sign up using that free link down in the description, and then you can follow along with this tutorial or any of the other ones I have here on the channel. And before we get started, do me a quick favor and hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos we're going to post here on the channel. All right, let's get started. So here we are in Kittle, but the first thing I wanted to do was check out some book cover design. So I'm over here in Pinterest, and what we're going to be doing today is making a fantasy uh, novel style book cover, and we're going to do an e-book cover, so we're really just focused on the front of it because publishing has made this easy. Self-publishing has made this easy, so it's basically removed the need for a, a, a publisher. So if I go to Amazon here, and I've just typed in fantasy novel, I'm just going to scroll through a little bit of this, and you can see uh, the style of captivating type uh, image graphic combo here that we're going to use to influence our own book cover. So we're back here in Kittle. Let's hit new project and then we're going to set up our document. So the first thing we're going to do is go to settings and we're going to change our book cover size to be 1600 by 2560. Normal book size cover for an ebook here. And then we are going to get started with laying out our type. So I'm just going to quickly input the type that we're going to be using. And the title is going to be The Dark Forest. That's going to be the title of our book here. And we're going to be using the Royal Signage font because it's kind of this floral, swashy, serif type font that's going to work really well for this book cover. Uh, design. So let's make the F capital and then we can go over to the glyphs panel, type in the letter T and we can pick a different T here and I like that one. It works well. At the end it is kind of a floral looking swash which is going to be perfect when we start adding floral illustrations. Let's do the same thing with the word dark. We'll change it to royal signage and we'll size it up just a little bit. With the word the we're going to tweak this later, so let's just make it small. We're going to make it a little bit more spaced out from each other, the letters spaced out from each other. And then what's cool about the Black River font here is that it's a variable font, so we can just make it as fat or as thin as we want, which is really cool. So we're going to tweak it later, not going to worry too much about it at the moment. So let's just get this right where it needs to be here in the middle of the board, and then we can start working on the rest of our layout. Or with the R, we're going to choose a different one. So let's go find something that works pretty well in the middle of this word, gives it a little bit more character, and we're going to place it, re replace that normal R with this flourished R like this. And then with the letter A, I think we can do the same thing. We have an opportunity. The Royal Signage font has a, a lot of beautiful glyphs. So let's take advantage of that and let's use something a little bit more flourished. So that's looking good. I like how it complements the forest, the, the F in forest and the T in forest. So that's looking like it's going to work for us here. So we're going to duplicate the word the and we're going to put our author name down here at the bottom. And there are a couple of different places that you could place the author's name. Sometimes you'll see them at the top. Sometimes you'll see them at the bottom. You could even see it somewhere else. But I think for this one, we're going to do it at the bottom. I think most commonly you will probably see author's names at the bottom as just what's most important is the hierarchy here so clearly we want the title of our book to be the most important the most front and center and then of course the author is important but then when we make subtext like this above like from the number one best-selling author or some other sort of subtext we want to make sure that we size this down quite a bit to be a lot smaller because it's not as important so the most important thing I think would be just hierarchy for your book cover. So make sure what's most important is front and center and then you are working with the rest of your layout to just make sure it makes sense and that your reader 
uh, doesn't have to work hard to understand what it is about or what the title of the book is of course so once we feel good about where that is we're going to change this e here i think we can give it just a little bit of different style so that's looking pretty good and now we're going to move on to color so i'm already thinking about the color we're going to use a kind of dark forest green and that's the sort of vibe we're going to go with for this book cover because it is a more fantasy kind of fairy tale vibe uh, it is the dark forest, so we're going to use dark tones, especially for the back, so that brighter tones can cut through for type. So with the type, for example, we're going to play around and find a more gold, gold yellow color that really breaks through and complements this background green color. So we'll just play with this a little bit and figure out exactly where we want to be. I'm feeling like this is looking a little bit better here. Hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this book cover tutorial, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and that red subscribe button. Then let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite type of book? Do you like more epic fantasy novel style books or do you perform more historical, autobiographical things like that? Either way, let me know because I'm curious to know. So then we can start playing with illustrations and we're going to be using florals for this book cover it is a forest illustrated type of it is a forest fantasy tale uh, and we have a lot of different florals you could use f you could use in Kittle we have these beautiful vintage flowers right here but we have a ton of other subsets of floral illustrations that you could use like these fine florals here if I click show more you can see a lot of these beautifully illustrated kind of two-tone colors here but what we're going to use is this Art Nouveau style of illustration. So if I find it right here, you'll see it. I'm going to hit Show All, and then I'm going to get to work formatting the front cover and framing it with these illustrations. So I'm going to time lapse this part because it is going to take me just a little bit of time. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating some symmetry between components and we want to fill space well, especially with these floral elements. So what you'll see me do is commonly uh, duplicate and then flip it. You can right click and flip any element here. See like I'm doing there. It's pretty easy to do. And once you feel good about one side, you could just do one side and then duplicate it and then flip it and you would be done with the other side. So we have a lot of variability with the different elements here. So it is easy for you to do. Now, I'm going to type in Raven because Raven is going to play a part in our book. So when I type in Raven, I can find an illustration that's going to work. And so you see there's space up at the top, kind of above the word the and dark. There is some space there. So I think this Raven could be cool as a little kind of secret in into what's going to happen in the book so i'm going to make him look like he's placed on this little r and you can play with other little icon illustrations like this for your own book cover um, so let's make that the same color as this text here to make sure that it's kind of blending in here and yeah i like how he's perched there on the side of that r kind of looking up uh, and it also fits just with the floral aspect here. So we're going to add some more florals as well just to fill out space. Now I know I mentioned symmetry before and it's a little bit different in this regard since we're painting more of a garden style kind of flowers all over the place and we want to make sure that we fill that space well. So you can feel at liberty to uh, create your own components uh, with those florals or anything else that we have here in Kittle. So now I'm going to make a a frame so I've gone over to the elements panel and I'm trying to make a a kind of metal style frame uh, that would be that you might commonly see in a garden so I'm gonna be putting in these corners and attaching them with lines and we want the lines to be the same color of course and so what you'll see me doing now is just making sure that all of these corner elements and these lines fit together we need to adjust some of the florals and then we also need to make sure that we're filling space well. So there are a couple empty places here where we're going to add some other little Art Nouveau flowers that really help look like they're hanging off uh, this gate here, which is a really cool effect. And I think it's going to help our book stand out either online or if it's on the shelf. And we're going to add these little components to the gate, these little, uh, this little gate frame that we're making for these florals here. So what I'm going to do now is find a badge to go in the middle section right here. And what I'm going to do with that badge is put the author's initials. And the idea is, you know, maybe this author uses this same kind of little badge 
as a uh, as a way to note that each of the book covers are her own, um, and she uses this little kind of monogram on each of her book covers. So let's get the color how we want to add text, and then what we're going to do is go over to the other section, and we're going to add our monogram font, which is an amazing font. All you have to do is double click in, and then we're going to type ww because that is the author's initials and it's gonna boom create a monogram for you in literally seconds it's pretty amazing so let's make that color exactly how we want it and now we can move on to working on the effects of our type because we want our typography to stand out nicely so we're going to add some effects here and i think the line shadow effect is going to work nice so let's use this green that we see in the florals here we want some connection there kind of looks like uh, they're reflecting each other and I like the way that this appears so we're going to increase that offset a bit so that it's a lot more noticeable and I'm going to work on the colors a bit later so uh, don't worry too much if things seem like they're all seeping in together it's okay uh, we just want to make sure we are getting our layout here uh, the way we want it so we're going to do the same thing with dark uh, as well we want to make sure that line shadow is the same now with how forest is i think we can use the arch effect right here uh, and help fill some space as well that's a little bit too much we can use the slider and get it just just a hair enough for it to kind of arc over top of those flowers and then we can have it just touching that top that bottom part of the r flourish right there now with the word the we're going to do something a bit different we're going to make it uh, the rise effect and we're going to make it sit kind of on top of this F right here and we're going to frame it in to make it look like part of this, uh, the rest of this title. So we've used the rise effect and now we're going to size it down just a little bit, make sure that we have more control with this space here. Uh, we're going to increase the letter spacing a bit more as well. And then what we're going to do is line it up as much as we can with the top part of this D here. You can see I'm trying to make sure that there's uh, there's this line that's being met, this invisible line that helps make sure that the layout doesn't fall apart. And now we need to fill in this space here above it, and we need to make sure that we finish the frame, so to speak. So we can go over to these elements over here, and we're going to hit show all on these bold flourishes, and we're going to make our own top part of this frame because the F is kind of making its own bottom part which is really really cool the top part of the F there and so we just want to make sure we do the same thing with the top of the then we're going to use some spot elements to put some little you know spot elements in between these spaces that need some filler in them so I'm just going to make sure I fill some space well with the rest of the flowers here as well there are some other places that need some more floral work here and to make it look like the type is kind of embedded in this garden that's the kind of style that i want to go for here so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a border because i want this uh, kind of more floral sharp feeling for the type and i'm going to switch these so i've got the border as a, the lighter uh, tan gold. I'm going to make that actually the re the actual gold. I'm going to make the fill the lighter one. And I think that looks a lot better. It's going to cut through a lot more when I start adjusting the colors. So that's what we want. We want this kind of uh, inset effect here, this kind of highlighted inset effect. And it looks like there's this reflection, which is really intriguing. And I think it's going to stand out. So we'll make dark do the same thing. And then we're going to put this little color cut effect on the word the. So this is looking quite nice and now we can start playing with the project colors but I think things are a little bit too uh, maybe muted or maybe monotone if you will they kind of all blend a little bit too much together and so what we're gonna do is play with this to make it a bit more vibrant we want our florals the color of the flowers to actually cut through a lot more and we want the type to be nice and vibrant as well and we want the background to stay uh, this kind of darker earthy forest green so to do that, I'm going to use this marble texture, and the marble texture is something that you might commonly see in super old fantasy uh, novel book covers. They'll use this uh, very marbled, grungy effect, and you can see when I did that, when I put it on, it made the back, that green, a lot more dark, a lot more uh, deep forest green which is what we want so we want to release that texture which you can do with that button and drag it down to the bottom because we just want it over top of the background color we want our text and our florals to still cut through on the top of it so we can just do that in the layers panel like I just did just keep it down there below keep adjusting colors as you see fit here you can see a close-up 
of our Dark Forest fantasy book cover made in Kittle with fonts, elements, florals, spot elements, everything that you need, you can do with Kittle. Well, I hope that tutorial was helpful for you to see how you can use Kittle to make your own book cover design. We would love to see it, so don't forget to tag us at Kittle Design on social media, and you can find those links down in the description. And I'd also love for you to consider joining our Discord community where you can also find that link down in the description. And that's a place where you can meet other designers using Kittle, get feedback on work, or just share what you're doing in Kittle. So I'd love to meet you there. Again, link is down in the description. All right, it's time for you to get started on your own book cover. But before you go, do me a quick favor and hit that red subscribe button. It will just take a second. And that's a way for you to know the next time you come to YouTube whether or not we've uploaded a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, create magic.